Hey everyone, it's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. Today is very exciting because it is the first day of our new craft stash hop. And what that basically is, is a group of crafty friends got together and we decided to have this blog hop about those forgotten supplies or tools that are just sitting on your shelf that you never get around to using. And we wanted to put them to good use and give some good inspiration while we were at it. So we've got three days, lots of prizes, and some fun inspiration for you. So now let's just get started on my portion of the hop. I decided to pull out my watercolor or adult watercolor book, and this is Painterly Days, and it is by Christy Rice. I will link it in the description. I first saw this book being used in a Christina Werner video, and she used it um, after it was all painted as an envelope, and I just thought that was so beautiful. So I went right out, I bought the book, it's so much fun, and then I realized after I made one envelope that it was just so much work, and I'm also not really good at watercoloring. So then I bought these Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers, and while it does make it easier, I'm still so intimidated by it, and it ends up just sitting on my shelf right next to the watercoloring book, and so I decided today to take these out and get started with some practice. So I've got my three colors that I'll be using because I will be layering these colors. That's what I've always heard to do with Zig markers. And I've got my Painterly Days watercolor sheet. Now this isn't watercolor paper. The paper is a little thicker so it can withhold some water, but it's certainly not as strong as say like some Strathmore cold press watercolor paper or something like that. So I want to use just a smaller amount of water. So I'm going to keep this paper towel here next to me so that I can dab some of the water off while I'm using my round paintbrush. So the first layer is going to be very light. I use my lightest yellow color that I have and you saw that I don't have too many uh, colors of these markers, but I have plenty to do what I wanted to do here today. So I'm going to just line the center of the petals with the color and then I'll pull it out or drag it out with my paintbrush and some water. So I want the tips of the petals to be the lightest color that there is on the flower. And that's sort of how it happens in nature, I believe. Anytime I look at a color or a picture, I'm sorry, of a flower, the color always seems to be concentrated most in the center of the flower. So that's what I want to recreate here. I'm going to speed this up quite a bit throughout the video because it does take an awful lot of time, but you'll be able to get a good gist of exactly what I did. And I'll be explaining a bit, of course, as we go along as well. I'm going to put just a little bit of music on while you watch me do this first layer. And then I'm going to go in with the second layer, which is a bit darker, but not my darkest color, which will come at the end. So I will check back in with you a little bit later on when I'm done with the coloring. first layer to dry completely which is that lightest yellow color layer and now I'll be going in with my second layer of color which is slightly darker it's this light orange shade and I'm going to apply it with the brush just as I have with the lightest yellow color and just a little bit less so I'm going to stick to the bottom center 
of each petal and then drag that up again with my paintbrush but I'm only taking it up about half of the way this time. I don't want to cover the entire light yellow color. I just want it to sort of fade into it. And I don't get a perfect fade. There's no perfect ombre here. I'm still learning, but this is the basic technique that I have learned through other YouTube videos and just reading about it. And this seems to be the way to go. After, again, I allow that layer to dry completely, I am going in with my darkest shade, which is this dark orange color. I'm just putting a bit there again at the tips of the petals, right at the bottom center of the petals, and dragging that up about halfway through that lighter orange color. So now there's about a quarter of the darkest orange, a quarter of the lighter orange, and then about half of that light yellow color from the first base color. here you have it. Here is my finalized watercolor flower. I actually really love it and I think I'm going to cut it out and use it as a piece on a card front of mine. In the description of this video you will find a link to this blog hop, my blog, Instagram, Pinterest, and all of the supplies used. Thank you so much for stopping by and I will see you very soon. Thanks! Bye!